Today I'm going to show you how I made mosquito screens for the back windows in my van. These screens don't require any modifications to your van. They're very discreet from the outside and don't interfere with opening and closing the windows. I'm using a no -seam screen that I bought at my local fabric store for about $7 a meter and which stops even the smallest of bugs. The first step will be to make a template of the shape of the opened window using masking tape. What we want is a smooth 3D pattern of the shape we want the finished screen to be when the window is open. I cut the masking tape pattern close to the latch to get it off the window, and now I can smooth it flat and trace its shape. The red outline is from my first try at making these screens. It always takes a few tries to get the pattern right, especially because I don't want the screen to be too tight or it won't fit, and not too loose or it will sag. Next we're going to want to make a casing around the edge that we can pass some cord through. I will need to add about an inch and a half for that edge. To be able to turn the hem over neatly in the rounded corners, I'll need to ease the fullness of the fabric. To do that, I'll need to sew a line of loose stitches where the first fold will be. I've measured half an inch and marked it with green tape, and I've set my machine to do its loosest stitch. Now I gently pull on one of the threads to gather the fabric slightly. Ideally you want to pull on the bobbin thread from the underside of the fabric because it will pull more easily. If I need to, I can pull the thread a bit tighter as I go along to make the hem lie flat. Now when I turn over the hem and pin it, the excess fabric can be smoothed into place. Now that I have all that pinned, I'm almost ready to sew. I'm going to mark with a pin where I want to leave a small opening on the farther side away from the window latch. I have two different weights of cord. The thin one is a little over an eighth of an inch, and the thicker one is about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to use the thicker one for the top of the screen because the gap it has to go into is bigger. To pass the cord through the casing, I'm using some clear tape to make a kind of shoelace end for it. Now that I don't need it anymore, I can cut away the tape and work the end back into the right place and hold it there with a pin. Now I can do the same thing with the smaller cord, this time running it along the bottom of the screen. Again, meeting up at the opening I left. I'm going to sew a quick line where the two cords meet to keep them in place. This is where the Velcro will go, so I'll cut the cord here and pin it so it doesn't move. Now I'll sew the ends down. So here's the finished screen with the Velcro sewn in place. Make sure your Velcro is facing the right way. I did the first one wrong and I had to unpick it. I left the extra bit of netting. A bit of an overlap can't hurt and it's not in the way. This is where the center post of the window latch will go. Now the first step is to attach the Velcro around that latch. Then starting at the far top corner, I will start poking the cord into the gap between the headliner and the rubber window seal.
To install the screen, I'm using a plastic spatula from the hardware store. Now, even though this is not sharp, I want to be very careful not to put pressure on the netting itself. I always want to keep the spatula on the cord. If not, I'm going to tear the screen. The bottom edge is much tighter, which means you'll have to use quite a bit of force. So again, be extra careful to keep the pressure on the cord as you push. It's a bit of a pain to install, but once the screens are in, they can stay in all season. This may take you a few tries to get the screen centered on the window. If you have trouble, just pull it out and start over. And that's it. Open, closed, the screens stay in place, they stop bugs, they're nearly invisible, and they don't block your view. Thanks for watching.